What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a video of Tucker talking about Zelensky and him suspending elections during the war. Imagine that happening in America or trying to attempt that in America. Good luck with that. Before we do, though, I want to pull up a advertisement from Dizzle Brand. Dot com and let's get into it this is a dis I spit it out special delivery I want that special delivery I need that special delivery I have that special yeah. delivery yeah. 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 special delivery I want that special delivery I need Come that on. If you ain't ready, I'm a bust through your curtain. Encore, you're not sure, I'm certain. Wait, make sure the mic work. Yeah, make cake, sort of like earth wind and fire. You see it? That's the Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur. Dizzle meets Langer Juices. Little advert we put together. So if you want to get your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur, which is a mixture of agave, tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix, just go to DizzleBrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Below that is locations in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and number one selling state for Dizzle, which is Arkansas. So definitely um, check out the locations in store in those states. Also, Dizzle brand merch, the hats, T-shirts, and much, much more. Go to DizzleBrand.com, click on merch store. Also, we got the Dizzle brand um, gummies. Go to DizzleNova.com. Definitely check them out, DizzleNova.com. And I'm actually going to start putting the link into the descriptions starting today. DizzleNova.com and DizzleBrand.com. And I'm going to actually start adding a little uh, DizzleNova.com action down here with the Do You Dizzle and whatnot. And it'd be Do You Dizzle, DizzleBrand.com and DizzleNova.com. And that's DizzleNova.com is basically the collab between Camp Nova and Dizzle. So check that out. And there's an article out there that I have to get online and repost today as well. So um, stay in tune. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Tucker Carlson talking about Zelensky. And I think he's also talking about Biden, if I'm not mistaken. Wondering recently, as the world slides closer to nuclear annihilation than any time in human history, why exactly are we at war with Russia? It seems like there's a pretty significant downside to this particular foreign policy decision, starting with economic collapse and ending potentially with extinction. So is there a good reason we're doing it? So many innocent young people. Before he goes any further, there's a lot of people out here that think we're not at war with Russia that Ukraine is at war with Russia and we're just giving them weapons and helping them out. As soon as you give them weapons and help them out, you're at war with Russia. Let's keep it moving. People have been killed. So many hundreds of billions of dollars have been wasted, some of them from the U.S. Treasury. So what's the point? Are we really doing this so the Biden family can repay its debts to the oligarchs who finance their beach house in Rehoboth? Are we doing it so our government can continue to lie about its illicit bio labs in Eastern Europe? so that flabby losers like Toria Newland and Tony Blinken can feel like they're doing something important with their sad, empty lives? Really? Honestly, there's got to be a better reason for waging this the most pointless war of all. What is it? Well, thankfully, we have an answer. The war against Russia, ladies and gentlemen, the war against Putin and for Ukraine is, in fact, a war for democracy. Watch and recall the motive. The president has said many times we're focused on what we can do to support Ukraine's effort uh, to fight for their democracy. Democracy must prevail. The Ukrainian people are fighting the fight for their democracy and in doing so for ours as well. Assisting and helping Ukraine what? win this fight for democracy and freedom. And of course, Ukrainian President Zelensky understand that what's at stake in Ukraine is bigger than just his nation. 
It is literally a battle for freedom and democracy themselves. They are showing the world what an existential fight for democracy looks like. Wow. President Zelensky and the Ukrainians have changed the course of history for the better, and we unequivocally are with the Ukrainian people in their fight like mainstream media. to remain a sovereign democracy. This reminds me of mainstream media. Unequivocally with the Ukrainian people to remain a democracy. It's a bipartisan view. <laughs> democracy must prevail. You just heard noted democracy expert Nancy Pelosi say, the daughter of the mobbed up mayor of Baltimore. As Pelosi puts it, the Ukrainian people are fighting the fight for their democracy and for ours as well. That's right, for ours as well. Without Ukrainian democracy, in other words, we can have no democracy here. If the Ukrainians aren't Which free, makes no neither sense. are we. We must make sure they can vote in Kiev so we can continue to vote in Kansas City. It's really that simple. And yet tonight, we regret to tell you that we have a problem. It looks like they're not going to be able to vote in Kiev anymore. And no, for once, it's not Putin's fault. Democracy in Ukraine seems to be suspended by the world's foremost democracy advocate himself, Field Marshal Zelensky. Hmm. Watch this. Go figure. So when you have an election, well, he says if we win, we'll let people vote. Otherwise, no, you vote when we feel like it, because ultimately we're completely in charge and make all the rules. Let me chime in real quick. The biggest thing that stuck out to me and what he just said there is not just that they're not going to have an election during wartime, during martial law. Martial law, which is anytime there's martial law, that means dictatorship. I got to spell it out for you. Dictatorship. Anytime there's martial law, that's di dictatorship. That's absolute control. Um, let them try Imagine if they tried that in America. Like, oh, we're at war with another country, which we're always at war with other countries. We're not going to have an election while we're at war. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, that wouldn't end well. That would not end well in America. Let's keep it moving. Your job is to obey or be punished. That's our version of self-government. Self means me. I'm the government. Now, that's not just any autocrat. That's our chief ally in the war for democracy. This is the guy who just announced he's likely to cancel next year's elections. So you've got to wonder what the Biden administration thinks of this. We can't possibly continue to support Zelensky, that guy, after he said that, can, can we? Because in a clip less than 30 seconds long, he just blew up our entire rationale for supporting his side in the war. So we can't support him. Oh, of course we can. And we will. Here's Joe Biden from yesterday reaffirming America's unequivocal support for Ukraine. No matter what happened in Russia, we, the United States, would continue to support Ukraine's defense and its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. Oh, you, the United States. So to recap, we are currently fighting a war for democracy on behalf of a leader who just casually announced he's happy to end democracy wow. and our democracy supporting leaders have no problem with that. In fact, they're strongly for it. What do they call that? Shocked? You shouldn't be. What do they call that? They call that a hypocrite. Hypocrite. It's called a hypocrisy. A hypocritical stance. It's called a double standard. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Of course they're for it. You should have seen this coming. Wars for democracy always cancel democracy in the process. That's why our leaders love them. And they all do it, even the virtuous leaders. Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus. The British government under Winston Churchill threw an entire opposition party into prison and let them rot for the duration, in some cases with their families. So in a war for democracy, you can do anything. <laughs> Imagine what a man might do who has fewer principles. If that man, say, ran Ukraine, he might seize churches, arrest priests, ban all criticism of himself, disappear his political opponents. And that's happening. Just last month, Zelensky threw a man called Gonzalo Lira into prison indefinitely for the crime of daring to write about the Ukrainian government in unflattering ways. Hmm. Now, what's interesting, what separates this from other such cases, is that Lira... Let's pump the brakes on that. That sounds like something that 
Russia would do, China would do, North Korea would do, Vietnam would do. It sounds like something that those communist countries would do, but this is supposed to be a democracy? What a hypocrisy. <laughs> is an American citizen. So Joe Biden, who is quite a bit of SWAT, as they say in Ukraine, could have freed Gonzalo Lira within hours, but he didn't. He didn't want to. He didn't say a word about it. He remains in prison tonight. So that makes you wonder, what's the real motive here? When normal Control. people see war, they see death and destruction, sadness and suffering. But that's not what demagogues see. They understand it differently. They know that war means power, mostly for them. During wartime, everything they do can be justified. War is the gravest of all emergencies. Imagine the COVID lockdowns times a thousand plus drones. Once war breaks out, politicians become gods with the power of life and death. So in a peaceful democracy, you have to debate your political opponents in public, and that's tiresome. But in a war for democracy, you can just throw them in jail or have them executed. You can see that many in Washington are looking forward to that moment. And that may be why they so fervently support Joe Biden, even many Republicans, against a potential opponent, the only opponent who opposes the war in Ukraine. If you were to end the war, their power would evaporate. Last week, a whistleblower produced WhatsApp messages from Hunter Biden, proving that at the very least, his father knew about his influence peddling businesses abroad and probably participated in them. Quote, I'm sitting here with my father, Hunter Biden wrote to his Chinese partners demanding money. As much as anything reported about the Bidens over the last several years, this was the smoking gun. There it is right there in the message. That would have been enough to cripple a normal president. It would have been more than enough to keep a normal president from running for office again. Yep. But it had virtually no effect on Joe Biden. Most media outlets ignored it completely or tried to... Another hypocrisy. If it was Donald Trump Jr., they would be going batshit crazy trying to lock up all the Trumps um, like they still are. And that's the thing, like... Oh, man, like, that's the problem, man. Like, anybody who knows anything about Malcolm X knows that he said that the Democrats are more deceitful. They're more deceitful um, and dishonest with it. Like... It, it, they're more hypocritical. It's all double standards across the board. You know, the, the things they think they should get away with, other people should be punished for. You know, and I've done, I mean, I don't even know if I need to hear the rest of this, but I, I'll go ahead and play a little bit more. It's been Biden's relationship with his son as some kind of moral victory. Quote, the real meaning of the Hunter Biden saga, as I see it, wrote Nick Kristoff of the New York Times, isn't about presidential corruption, but is about how widespread addiction is and about how a determined parent with unconditional love can sometimes reel a child back. <laughs> he actually wrote that. And if you doubt it, you should know that view was common. Here's the take from ABC. The Hunter Biden story the scandal, the this, the that, it's also the story of a father's love. And Joe Biden has never and will never give up on his son, son Hunter, and will never treat him lesser than. And so he is a father first. Take it or leave it. So a whistleblower produces a text message showing that Joe Biden was in the room with his son. Let me chime in on that. Take it or leave it. Would you take horse shit? Would you just take bullshit? I wouldn't take horse shit or bullshit. You know, you can keep that. You know, so, like, the view is the most uncredible source of opinions on the planet. They're completely biased. Completely biased. Um, They can't like they they always got their mind made up that like when they have a certain person on that they're going to attack them like they typically only have people on 
the the view that they are going to attack and and that's a terrible way to do interviews and create content you know like i don't want to interview i really don't want to interview people that i feel like i have to attack like Piers Morgan, I like Piers Morgan, um, but his style is not really a style that I would want to do on the regular. Maybe every now and then, but if I'm like interviewing people, I want to just, you know, interview them about the positive things. And I, if I feel like I got to attack somebody, I wouldn't even bring them on, you know, like The View does. And I definitely would want to go on the show that I already know they're going to attack me. They're just going to go into attack mode, you know. Um, because there, there's one thing to go on shows and debate, but like some of these shows, like I'm gonna react to a, a, a interview with um, a very shameful interview with the Breakfast Club with that um, Vivek R- Ramanzi. What, I can't think, I guess, that, I can't remember his last name, Vivek Ramanzi, something like that. He's the, um, the, what they call, they would say, they would say Indian American, but he's the American um, guy running for president that is of, uh, his parents are of Indian descent. You know, that's the thing. We're the only country, that's another problem with this country. We're the only country where you could call yourselves something else. You born in America, but you call yourselves something before you call yourselves America. Indian American, African American, Asian American. Um I, I guess back in the days they probably used to call themselves Italians Americans and Irish Americans. But once you're born in America, you're just America. Like in France, you can't go over there and say you're Italian French or American French or British French. You just once you move to France and you start living in France and become a citizen of France, you're just French. You're just French. You know, they don't allow the the two part system of, you know, putting something before being American when you were born in America. And that's the thing, like I would argue that people from those countries don't consider them like they don't consider consider a person um, of Indian descent born in America as Indian American. I think they consider them as an American. Once because once you've been raised in the American culture, you don't know nothing about uh, being raised in Indian culture so much. You really don't. I mean, your parents still might raise you in Indian culture somewhat, but you're exposed to the American culture day to day. Like Vivek Ramanzi, whatever his last name is, um, excuse me if I get it wrong, but you can tell that a thousand percent he was born in America. You can tell, you know, he has no accent, no Indian accent whatsoever. Um, I know for a fact that Africans don't consider um, African-American as a real thing. They consider them as um, black Americans a lot do. Asian American, like, I don't know that um, most Asians consider Asians born in America as Asians Americans. You know, it's only in America that you can do that, you know. And, um, yeah, he said Lincoln um, suspended habeas corpus, but, like, they were still voting on things. They were still voting on things during the Civil War. Um, I'm pretty sure they would have still had an election during the Civil War. So the I like this idea that Ukraine is fighting for democracy, and they've literally suspended democracy, is such horseshit, such bullshit. You know, it's the same same thing as uh. Biden is a father first. Take it or leave it. I leave it because um I don't take horse shit and I don't take bullshit either. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Um, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.